Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. A very popular question in the Creative Cow After Effects forum is how do I create a freeze frame? By that, I mean people want to know how to have footage play, then freeze, and then start playing again. It's actually quite easy, and I'll show you how. First, let's talk about how not to do it. Here I am in After Effects with some video footage. I'll just scrub around in time so that you can see that this is actually a video and not a still image. Look, nothing up my sleeve. Cool. After Effects comes with a tool called Freeze Frame. Now you can find this tool by selecting your footage in the timeline and then choosing Layer, Time, Freeze Frame. What this tool does is turn your video footage into a still image based on the current frame. So as you can see, if I move down in time, it's now holding the frame that I was on when I used the freeze frame tool. So while it's true that this tool does give you the ability to freeze your video, it doesn't really do what we in the business of video call a freeze frame, video that plays and freezes and then plays again. Now if you look in the timeline, you'll see that a property called time remapping has been added to the video and that a hold keyframe has been added to that property. Now I've dealt with time remapping in many of my tutorials and I even plan on doing a tutorial that explains its many uses in depth but the short of it is that time remapping allows you to control video footage through keyframing. Basically by assigning a numerical value to each frame we can type in the number and call up that frame. And of course the values are based on frame numbers so if I wanted to call up the first frame I type in zero hours 0 minutes, 0 seconds, and 0 frames. Remember, in the NTSC timecode, the first frame is always 0. You could also just type in 0 for short. That works too. If I wanted to call up video from the timecode 2 seconds and 3 frames, I could type 2 colon 03, and it would bring up that frame of video. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why am I wasting your time telling you all of this if the freeze frame tool doesn't do what we want? Hey! Have a little faith. While the freeze frame tool doesn't do it for us, time remapping does. So here's how it works. First off, I'm going to get rid of any and all time remapping keyframes by selecting my time remap layer and choosing layer, time, enable time remapping, which as you can see currently has a check next to it, meaning that it's active. So that means that by clicking on it, I'm actually disabling it. As you can see, the time remapping property disappears from the layer along with its keyframe. Before we go any further, let's add some time to our composition. Right now the composition is the same length as our video, but if we want to do a freeze frame, we'll need more time because we're adding in the extra time of that frozen moment. So we need to at least have time for the length of the original footage plus any time we add to it with the freeze frame. Okay, well if you are working in a bigger composition and this video was just a small part of that, you might not have to deal with this. In that case, there would already be enough room in the timeline. But for the sake of this tutorial, just go with me here. Choose Composition, Composition Settings. This opens the Composition Settings dialog where we can make changes to the properties of our composition, including the duration. I'd like to add 10 seconds to the composition. Now, I don't plan on using all of that for the freeze frame, but it's a nice round number and I'm kind of obsessive compulsive, so it works for me. So, for duration, I'm just going to highlight the current duration and then type over that with plus 10.00 for 10 seconds and 0 frames. By placing a plus sign at the beginning of the number that I entered at duration, After Effects understands that I'd like to add that amount of time to the composition. If I didn't have the plus there, After Effects would think that I wanted my composition to be only 10 seconds long. So don't forget the plus. With that done, I'll click OK to confirm, and as you can see, if I expand the overview portion, my composition has an extra 10 seconds at the end. Now let's add time remapping to our layer. So, with the layer selected, choose Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping. Kapow, baby! The time remap property has been added back to our layer. Oh yeah, I'm uh, experimenting with catchphrases. You know, that chef guy has his BAM every time he does something. I thought I'd try my own. And, uh, okay, maybe Kapow isn't the greatest choice. I'll have to watch more fight scenes from the 1960s Batman show and find a better one. Okay, back to the tutorial. Now, you'll notice that two keyframes have been added into the time remap property. One at the beginning and one at the end. 
And these represent the first and last frames of our video. So if you were to push these keyframes closer together, the footage would play faster. Or if you pulled them further apart, it would play slower. I'll just undo that. OK. So with time remapping enabled, let's move to the point in time where we want to have a freeze frame. Once you're there, add a time remap keyframe by clicking on the add keyframe button for the time remap property. OK, so far so good, but this is where people get confused. This is not a freeze frame. All that we've done here is add a keyframe that says show the current frame, which doesn't actually change anything. And your first thought might be to copy this keyframe and paste it further down in the timeline. And that would sort of work. Between these two keyframes, everything would be frozen. However, keep in mind that by placing a keyframe from much earlier and putting it closer to the keyframe that calls up the last frame of our video, the footage between these two keyframes will play faster than it's supposed to. And that's because by placing these two keyframes closer together, we're telling After Effects to play what originally ran from here to here in the space of a much smaller length of time. Let me undo this. OK. Instead, let's do the following. Again, add a keyframe at the freeze point, and then select that keyframe and the last keyframe, and drag them down in time. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. Now we're lengthening the playback from the first frame to our new keyframe, which means that from here to here, things will play slower. So all we've really done is trade one problem for another. What good is that? Well, hey, I'm not done yet. Hello? Remember that whole thing about having some faith? <laughs> Man, you have a short memory. But I'll forgive you. I'm just that kind of guy. Okay, with those keyframes moved, let's now copy the new keyframe by selecting it in the timeline and then choosing Edit Copy. Then choose Edit Paste which pastes the keyframe to the current point in time, which of course was the keyframe's original position in the timeline. By doing this, we set things up so that the beginning and end both play at the normal speed, but that this space between these two keyframes holds the frame of video that we selected. Remember, since these two keyframes both call up the same frame of video, there's nothing changing between these two frames, which means that the video stays frozen until the time remap values start changing again. And by selecting and moving the last two keyframes closer or further away from the first two keyframes, we can expand or tighten up the length of the freeze frame. Oh, final note. You'll probably have to untrim the end of this layer so that you can see the video past its original length. Time remapping sets up layers so that they can be expanded to the full length of the composition. Although in After Effects CS3, not yet released, it looks like you can expand to an unlimited amount of time. In other words, more than the length of the composition. That's a feature I've been waiting for. Anyway, as I scrub through time, you can see that the footage plays and then freezes and then plays again. Alright, that's it. Time's up. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.